We welcome all of you this morning. Welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online. And uh, as we begin this morning, we wish happy birthday to one of our members who's celebrating it. And uh, hope you have a most wonderful day. And we will begin with hymn 149. Maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any special prayer requests this morning? Just lift your hands. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, as we come at this time into your presence, I pray, Lord, that we come truly with thankful hearts, grateful for the many, many ways in which you have touched our lives and blessed us since last we gathered. Thankful, Lord, for the beauty of the day, Thankful for this moment that we have to come together and to, to worship as your body, the church. Thankful, Lord Jesus, for the gift of your presence with us in this place. Your presence with us at all times, wherever we are, whenever we worship. And for the gift of your Holy Spirit poured out on all your people. Lord, we pray that that spirit would fall fresh on us again now that you would fill us with wisdom and understanding, with the ability to truly open our minds, our hearts, and our spirits to the power of your word and let it mold us and shape us into the Christians you need us to be. And Lord, we are thankful for the opportunities that we have to share your love, to testify and witness to your salvation to the difference your cleansing blood makes in our lives so that those, Lord, who are struggling, those who are lost in sin may see the light of hope that it shines through our lives and know that you can bring that same light to theirs. Lord, we lift up those before you who are sick and we pray for their healing. We lift up those who are grieving and ask that your spirit would bring comfort and peace to their hearts and their spirits and their minds. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless us as your people so that we may take those blessings as good stewards of your divine grace and use them to lift others up in their times of need, witnessing to your glory and to your love. For it is to you, Lord, that we lift our hearts. It is you, Lord Jesus, that we glorify this morning. And it is only through the Holy Spirit that we can find your strength and your inspiration to carry us forward in ministry. So bless us, Lord, as we worship you. Receive our praise and thanksgiving as we lift our voices in song. And Father, we pray now that you would hear our prayer as we lift our voices together in the prayer our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Our next hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excel. 283 in our hymnals here. receive the morning tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. 
Heavenly Father, as we come now bearing our tithes and our gifts, we pray that you would receive them and that, Lord, you would bless and multiply them many times over, sending them out into this community and into the world, even as you send us, that they may build your kingdom. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
verses 23 through 25. Matthew chapter 4, beginning with verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Please be seated. I also want you to turn to Romans chapter 12. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 12. Paul writes to the congregation of Christians there in Rome. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And may the Lord add his blessing this reading from his word. Now Matthew, in what we read a while ago, records how Jesus went throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing sickness and disease among the people, casting out demons, healing broken bodies. People would bring their loved ones, their friends, their neighbors, and themselves, and they would present their sick and their diseased bodies to Jesus who would heal them and who would restore them to health. Now Paul, in his letter to the Christians in Rome, tells us that we are to present ourselves before Jesus today, but in a more complete and a more powerful way that allows Jesus to heal all of us, all parts, not just the physical, but the spiritual the mental, everything. And so let's take a moment and, and look at what Paul is talking about in this section of his letter to the church in Rome. In that first verse of this 12th chapter, there are two key words that we need to hear and we need to really understand. The first is, he says that we are to present. We are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Now the Greek word that is used here and that is translated in this passage as present, everywhere else Paul uses it in this letter is translated as yield. So when we present our body, what goes with it? Everything, heart, mind, soul, spirit, Everything, our gifts, our graces, our strengths, our weaknesses, our hopes, our fears, everything is presented to Christ and yielded to his will. 
Paul is saying that we have to be able to place our very being at God's disposal. All of our efforts, our strength and energy has to be focused on serving God's will and God's cause. His ministry in, it, in its many forms to a lost and a faithless world so that we can bring them to a true knowledge and understanding of Jesus where they can accept him for themselves and be forgiven and saved. So the, the first thing for us to hear and embrace is that we need to present all of it to Jesus Christ. We do that in prayer. We do that here in worship. We present ourselves to him and we yield everything about ourselves to Jesus. And that second key word in this passage, the word in Greek that Paul uses is logikos, which is translated two ways in the New Testament. It's translated both as reasonable and also as spiritual. So this yielding of ourselves to God, Paul says, is your reasonable service to him. What Paul's saying is that the service of an obedient life is the only reasonable, the only logical response to God's amazing grace, to his great love that he has poured out on us. And that yielding is both physical and spiritual because our spiritual worship of God doesn't just happen in this hour. Our spiritual worship of God doesn't only happen when we are with him in prayer. Our spiritual worship of God is then lived out through obedient service to him as we embody Jesus Christ to those who are in need around us. Whether that need that we meet is physical because they're hungry or thirsty or, or naked or homeless or whether that need we meet for them is a spiritual need because they're lonely or fearful or grieving or struggling with their sins. We are called to meet these needs as we stand in for Jesus, as we, being his disciples, his ambassadors, in teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and allowing the Holy Spirit to, to work through us to, to heal spiritual and physical sicknesses. We do it by our faithful witness by our testimony, by laying on of hands, through prayer. We do it by loving them. And as recipients ourselves of the love and the blessings of God, we want to serve. Let me tell you right now, if you don't want to serve Jesus, you don't have Jesus. You hear that, church? If you have no desire in your heart to serve Jesus Christ, he's not there. You've missed it somewhere. You need to go back to the basics. You need to get back on your knees in prayer. You need to get back in the scriptures. Because Christ's presence within you doesn't just lay there and snooze. The presence of the Holy Spirit is a fire as the prophet said in the Old Testament. A fire that burns in our bones so that we can't be quiet. We have to tell the good news. We have a burning desire in our heart to save these people who are lost in their sins, who are dying in their sins because they can't see a better way. They don't realize there is one. And if they don't see Jesus Christ in us and how he's changed our lives, they will completely miss it. Their only hope is you. We're it. We are the church. We stand in for Jesus Christ right here and right now. And he's calling us to be faithful to that. You see, the only proper response to all the grace, to all the forgiveness, to all the love that God has poured into our lives through Jesus Christ, the only proper response to this grace is gratitude. And the only way we can show that gratitude, that thankfulness, is by being obedient, loving children. And Jesus modeled that for us in his own life. 
That's why Andre Crouch wrote that powerful song, To God Be the Glory, when he said, how can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you came to prove your love to me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe it all to you. To God be the glory for the things he has done. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. What a powerful song. How do you respond to that? How do you respond to that love and the blessings and the glory in your life? The second part of that verse, Paul gives us a warning. He says, and do not be conformed to this world. Oh, church, do we need to hear that? Especially today, especially in this society where we live. Do not be conformed to this world, to its attitudes, to its values, to its way of thinking. As God's church, we have to wake up. I mean, we have just muddled along in this sense of, of, of mediocrity and lukewarmness for so long. And it has brought us to this place we're at where so many are questioning, is there any hope? There's always hope. We are still here. God still loves us. His power has not waned. And his calling to us has not changed. We need to wake up and not just muddle through life like somebody who's spiritually unaware. But instead, we need to consciously be paying attention to what the Holy Spirit not only is telling us to do, but to what the Holy Spirit is calling us out of and what he is warning us to stay away from and not be a part of. Because church, we are set aside. As Christians, we are taken to a different place. We are called to be different. We are sanctified and that means something. They've got to see Jesus in us or they will never believe that he can make a difference. You see, sin is as terrible a disease as any physical addiction. It takes a tremendous focus and, and a great support system to overcome addiction in our lives. And it takes a daily commitment to transform and not to relapse. Any addict can tell you that it only takes one sip of alcohol, one pill, one more hit of the drug of their their uh, addiction, and they're right back in the depths of that pain and misery and suffering and darkness. And sin is just the same. And the only way to avoid relapse is daily commitment to focusing on God's will, studying Jesus' word, and embracing the power of the Holy Spirit to keep us clean and our minds fresh and alert. It takes the fellowship and the support of one another, lifting each other up in prayer and encouragement and holding one another accountable for us to do this, to really be changed. And we have to be paying attention to the others around us whom the Holy Spirit is calling us to reach out to, to witness to, to minister to. In Galatians 1, 4, Paul calls our time on earth this present evil age. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, he warns us that Satan blinds the minds of the unbelievers. And that's what we face if we let ourselves be conformed to the world. The lure and the power of worldly thinking and worldly values compromise the spiritual truths of the gospel. And we will become blind to the reality of God's call on our lives and to the need we have to yield ourselves completely to Christ. 
but for all of us who will truly invest ourselves in Jesus, who believe in and are willing to receive the salvation that he offers us, there is new life. You think nothing changes? There's a lot that changes. We realize that while we physically are here living on this earth, we can conduct ourselves as heirs and citizens of the kingdom of God in heaven. You say, well, well, how is that possible, Brother Jack? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's possible because the salvation of Jesus Christ brings the presence of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God to come and to dwell within us, making us a new creation in him. As Paul explained in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. A new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. You see, when we are in Christ, we are transformed. We don't see the world the way we used to see it. We don't deal with situations the way we used to deal with them. We are a new creation in him. And if you're the same as you were last week, if you're the same as you were last year, if you're the same as you were a decade ago in your thinking and in your spirituality, then you've missed it. You need to come back into his presence and yield yourself to him. You need to embrace this power of the Holy Spirit that transforms you and makes everything new. That's why Paul said, don't be conformed to this world. Instead, he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, it gets renewed daily. This isn't a one and done deal. Satan is constantly coming against us and we must constantly be seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance and presence every morning to go with us and to direct us and to renew our minds so that today's challenges, which are different from yesterday's, can be met with the same confidence, the same peace, the same power of God that will see us through them as an example to everyone around to what Jesus can do if they yield their lives to him. And so Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, what he's saying is when you do this, when you allow the Holy Spirit to transform you, you become living proof of what God's perfect will is for his people. You're it. They want to know, what does God do? You're what God does. What is God's perfect will? Look at the lives his people are living. That's it. When our minds are transformed and renewed, we take on the mind of Christ and we are within the will of God. And we are what Jesus called us to be, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Shining so that they can see Christ in us. Reflecting his love to all those around us who are lost in the darkness of fear and sin so that they can see that there is an alternative. There is a way out. Not only is there hope, there's promise. You are a redeemed and a sanctified child of the living God and so you are a true light that stands out in this world and draws others to you who are themselves seeking a way out of the darkness. You're a beacon of hope and love to those who are fearful and those who are lost and those who are struggling. And in order to keep our lights burning and to keep our witness true and faithful, we have to seek the presence of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit every day to have our minds renewed again and again and again by the mind of Christ. Has your mind been renewed this morning? This week? Last week? Last month? 
Have you been transformed at all in the last year? Because Jesus never stops working. He never stops calling us. He never stops molding and shaping and perfecting us more and more and more into the people he's called us to be so that we look more and more and more like him in every aspect of our lives. And this daily renewal is the means through which this process of, of sanctification and spiritual growth happens. You have to stop and pray. Seek his presence. Seek his power. Let your mind be focused on God and allow Christ to transform the very nature of how you think so that the Holy Spirit can give you strength for today. Every day is a new challenge, a new calling. Every day is filled with new opportunities, but you will only succeed as a Christian if your spirit is renewed and ready. Finally, I'm getting done, I'm getting done. Finally, okay. Remember that this transforming, this renewing work is happening to every one of God's people. It's not just you. It's all his people everywhere and in different ways because we have different gifts and we have different callings. You see, the mark of God's hand in action in this world is not in uniformity. That's what society wants. They want to make you all do the same thing, dress the same way, act the same so they can line you up like ducks in a row and control you, control you, control you. Uh-uh. God's hand is displayed in diversity. Look at his creation all around you. Did he make only one kind of tree to provide oxygen for this earth? And there's only one? No. Did he make only one kind of bird that sings only one kind of song? No. It's diverse. All of God's creation is diverse, including us. We don't all look the same. We don't all dress the same. We don't all speak the same, think the same, because we are uniquely created in God's image. But we're all created for the same purpose. And that is to be loved by him and to learn to love one another. People of different sizes, colors, speech, social experience, upbringing, temperament, and abilities are all called to come together in love and service. And you add to this all the different spiritual gifts that God spreads among us and in differing degrees, and you have a wonderful, glorious, amazing kaleidoscope of God's people who, working together, are the body of Christ, moving and accomplishing the work of God in this world. And that's why Paul admonishes us in this passage to be humble, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Not to think that your gift is better than another's gift or that somebody else's gift is better than yours because every gift is needed in order for the body to be healthy and whole and to function properly. And the thing that is incomprehensible to the world and that sets us and seals us as Jesus' people is that we don't love each other in spite of our differences. We love each other because of our differences. We love one another for who God created them to be. And we encourage each other to, to embrace that unique gift and spirit that is within us. As we all together embrace the Holy Spirit that, that pulls us together as one and moves us all in the same direction, doing different things in different ways, but all moving to the same goal, and that's to make disciples of Jesus Christ. To let them see what God can do in us and what he can do for them. We cherish this diversity that God has created among his people because it allows us to reach everyone with the gospel and with God's love. God has called every one of us to become his children in a family that will never be divided it will never be broken. Don't conform to the world who tells us only to love people who love us. That tells us only to trust those who look like us and sound like us. Only to welcome and befriend people who dress the way we do it and think the way that we do. Instead, be transformed daily into the child of God you were called to be. 
by focusing through prayer, through study of the scriptures on God's will, letting the Holy Spirit renew your mind so that you have the mind of Christ to shape and guide you through this day. God loves you. Christ died for you. And the Holy Spirit will never leave you, never forsake you, will never let you fall. If you will obediently respond to this grace of God. I challenge you this morning to respond to that grace. Let it change you and mold you so others can see that God is at work in your life. No, we're not perfect, but we haven't stopped growing. We haven't stopped trying. We have not lost our faith in Christ. It grows stronger every day. Then they will believe that he can work in their lives just like he's working in ours. Go tell the world about the love of God, about the saving power of Jesus Christ, and let the Holy Spirit empower you as you go. They're waiting. They're starving. And you have the bread of life. Don't get so caught up in stuff that you can't see what really matters. Don't get so over-focused on the Super Bowl that you can't still see God's Super Bowl goal for you as his child, for us as his people, and for those who are lost. The transforming of your worldly life into a spiritual life fit for his kingdom in heaven is what we need to be living towards because that transformation will allow you not only to be a disciple, but it will allow you to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation then of the world. Our closing hymn is 154. Have thine own way, Lord. <clears throat>
our risen Lord and Savior, and the unity and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit be and abide within each of you, now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.